Abraham Lincoln was known for a couple things in the United States. One, top hat. And then there were other things like the Emancipation Proclamation, leading the North to victory in the Civil War, his incredible speeches throughout US history. But did you know that the man that did all those things also used to absolutely body people on the map? With a record that amassed over 300 wins, being credited for inventing the choke slam and a place in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Abraham Lincoln may be America's greatest wrestler that nobody knew about. I can't act like I knew that. Oh look, the tag's still on this, that's embarrassing. Ooh buddy, but as soon as I found out, I had to know everything. Which is why I brought over a guy who knows a bit more about it than I. So, Abraham Lincoln was a wrestler? Yeah. So Abraham Lincoln, as were many, many men uh, who were involved in volunteer militia, would have been trained in wrestling as like the thing to do. It was the sort of contemporary martial art to most of the armed weapon styles at the time. It would have been taught to you in what passed for basic training at the time. It would have been a sport that you did in school. And Abraham Lincoln was not just a wrestler. He would have practiced what he would have then called catches catch can wrestling. Um, no. Oh, really? Yeah, catches catch can or frontier wrestling is what people would have called it at the time. Frontier wrestling, I like that. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln had as many as 300 matches. No, 300? 300. Like matches? Recorded matches. Now, there might be some Wilt Chamberlain stats here. There might yeah. be some... some chicanery, yeah. but only one loss that anybody seemed to care about or write about. I don't actually believe that anybody has a 301 record. Yeah. But that is the myth. What's, who's the loss against? Uh, it is, uh... Oh, whoa, 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 we haven't heard of burying the lead, Joshua. We'll actually get to that in a couple other stories later. Uh, most importantly, I want to learn about Abraham yeah. Lincoln's takedowns, his go-tos. Yeah, drive, drive, drive. I want to learn what the heck Frontier Wrestling was in the first place. I want to be in the areas that it would happen in. And lastly, I want to have a match like one of the 301, or possibly more, that Abraham Lincoln would have had. And I want to win them, too. That's not the important... I'm sorry, I get caught up sometimes. So, there are two versions of the Abraham Lincoln invents the choke slam while fighting Jack Armstrong story. Sorry, invents the choke slam? Yes. Oh, so the choke slam, like... Like Big Show came yes, under. Yes, yes, yes. The first record of someone being lifted by their throat and slammed onto the ground <laughs> in a Western style wrestling match was Abraham Lincoln. No shot. He wrestled a man named uh, Jack Armstrong. Okay. They agreed to fight. Many people had heard Abraham bragging about his wrestling prowess and his skill set. Yeah. Jack Armstrong and his gang, Clary's Grove Boys. The Jack Clary's, Armstrong and the Clary's Grove Boys. You have to choke something, anybody who goes by the Clary's Grove Boys. Exactly. So in some versions of the stories, they challenge him to a wrestling match. Abraham Lincoln wrestles Jack Armstrong and in the match does a legal takedown that somehow involves a hand in this area, picks him up, slams him on the ground for the pin, and he was supposed to wrestle all of the Clary's Grove boys, and they go, no, we don't want that smoke. And that's one version of the story. The other version of the story is the wrestling match devolves in a fist fight. Armstrong takes a swing at Lincoln. Yeah. Lincoln, in his rage, grabs him by the throat, lifts him up, shakes him like a rag doll, and then the Clary's Grove boys descend on him all of them kicking and punching, and Abe is just laughing maniacally. Those are the two versions of the stories that exist. Okay, I like the second one. I, I mean, I think the second one is more beautiful as a story. I think the first one gives us options for maybe you inventing your own version of Abe's Chokeslam. Ooh, okay, okay, I like that. We then started to theorize a bit more about Abe's Takedown, but we're gonna get into this much more later on. I was actually barely allowed to film in there in the first place, and I didn't really want to cause a ruckus by choke slamming each other on hollowed ground. Because, like, I picture, you say Abraham Lincoln was a wrestler, and I picture him in a singlet for some reason. For sure that existed in a way. Likely, they were never completely shirtless. Okay. Uh, even if they weren't wearing a jacket, they would uh, have some sort of linen undershirt situation. If we're talking military matches, they would probably be wearing just their military breeches rolled up. But if we're talking like a gymnasium match or an organized match or a quote unquote professional match, maybe they would have like linen athletic wear that would look like underwear to us, frankly. When you get into that area, 
Yeah. You also have to talk about the theatricality of wrestling. Okay. And there were costumes of professional wrestlers who traveled from town to town and challenged the locals and made their living that way. Wait, what? Yeah. Like, is so? Are we are we talking about pro wrestling? Mm -hmm. Or the step right before that? Two. I would say two steps before that. You might have these guys that might be traveling with something like a circus or a performing troupe, right? Okay. Or they might be traveling with a troupe of just wrestlers. Yeah. They'd go from town to town, challenge the locals. Yeah. And drum up money. Sick. The step in between uh -huh. this and pro wrestling is, hey man, what if you lose a match on purpose yeah. so we can get this guy to think he can beat me and then I smoke him. Being a shark. Okay. Interesting. And then that gets wrapped up now we're post Civil War. Now we're into the vaudeville situation. Yeah. And circus is really happening in sideshow acts. And gotcha. then we hit pro wrestling. Gotcha. Okay. But the very, very roots of this are guys traveling from town to town, basically being wrestling sharks for locals. Wrestling sharks. Can you imagine? I guess really it wouldn't be that hard as long as you watch out for the mouth. But if you've been wondering where in the heck we are this whole time, this is Bennett Place. If you're not from the US, Abraham Lincoln was president during the Civil War. The Civil War was essentially over tensions about slavery, states' rights, economic differences between the North and the South. Uh, Abraham Lincoln being the leader for the North. And this location is where the largest surrender of Confederate troops happened. This is where the last Confederate army truly dissolved. In this building that we're in right here. Huh. Fire alarm? How far back that technology goes. Does it have anything to do with wrestling? No. Was it somewhat close to me, a drivable distance, and pretty cool? Yes. As long as one more person learns about Abraham Lincoln's wrestling, I don't care how I get you to figure it out. Oh, just a YouTube video. What's up? We're talking about Abe Lincoln wrestling. Abe, Lincoln. Abe, Abe Lincoln was a wrestler. Did you know that? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. He was actually very famous. He had upwards of 300 matches, only a couple recorded losses. Oh, very interesting. I had no idea. Me either. Isn't that cool? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, I guess mission, mission accomplished. <laughs> you still have to finish watching the video, though. One of the only pictures I could find of Abraham Lincoln wrestling was a shot that was almost exactly the same to this. Yes. There's like maybe a group of people around. Is this a typical format? If you and I agreed to wrestle, yeah. right? We decided for whatever reason, Either we have beef or we want to make some money. There would be somebody in town, maybe it's the barber, maybe it's the judge, one of those big important positions, which is weird to think about. And we would go to them and say, hey, we're going to do this. They would say, oh, so-and-so's got a mat or, oh, we don't have a mat. And by mat, I mean like canvas and pine boughs. And while people are wrangled into setting that up, we would be hawking. We would be trying to get people's attention. Yeah, and as part there, of that, there's a group of people yeah. around in the picture, yeah. And we want them to come watch. Right. We want them to either bet, or we want them to buy us dinner, or put me up for the night. Oh, you guys put on a great show. Your drinks are on me. Oh, stay in the inn, it's on me. How cool. Right? Yeah. And so, we want that as much as we may or may not have beef, we want the result. Which is probably why Abraham Lincoln had the notoriety to be able to run, is because exactly. it wasn't just wrestling. Yeah. It was part of... Like sideshow work. Yeah, right? right. It's vaudeville. And we start to see the beginnings of American circus and vaudeville wrestling happen. Yeah. Just by, you got to get a crowd. Yeah. But still high level wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Like, still experts. That is incredibly cool. Um, I would love to practice all this. Yeah. Except I think I'm not going to, I don't, I don't want to do it on the grass. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Let's just go to the gym. Wait, isn't that Jack Armstrong story nuts? Who'd have thought? Abe Lincoln, the wrestler. Just a salt of the earth type of guy. Speaking of salt, today's video is brought to you by Element, a sugar-free but yet still delicious electrolyte drink mix. Abraham Lincoln would have no doubt sweat during his presidency. There's a lot going on. And I can also guarantee you that Abraham Lincoln had salt. Thus, I can further deduct, Abraham Lincoln was also a lawyer. Thus, I can further deduct that my client, Abraham Lincoln, did have Element. Legally, I, that's probably not true because Element was founded in like 2019. But that does not take away from the fact that Element is delicious. Whenever people do sweat, they do lose a fair amount of salt. This is less known. You ever been wrestling with somebody and your mouth was open? And then you get a little bit of them in you via sweat? You ever notice how salty it is? That's because it's salt. There's salt in there. Your body loses salt when you sweat and Element is on a mission to get that salt back into you. That's where it belongs. I'm not sure if I'm Abraham Lincoln or Seth at this point, but me, Seth, um, anytime I'm in a tournament, I'm in practice, literally my everyday workouts, if I feel like I'm sweating a lot, I drink Element. One, it's delicious. They've got a lot of flavors. One of them will probably be your favorite. Mine's watermelon. 
two, the cold months are coming up, which means maybe you want something a little bit warmer. They've got a flavored chocolate medley that you put in a little hot water. Oh my gosh, it's hot chocolate, but with salt. My client, Abraham Lincoln, knew that electrolyte deficiencies cause headaches, cramps, muscle fatigue, weakness, uh, brain fog. There was fog on the Gettysburg field. Uh, I shouldn't joke about Gettysburg. Drinking element can get those electrolytes back in you and help fight those symptoms. You can get a free sample pack with any order that you make today through my link, drinklmnt.com slash sensei set. Get a free sample pack. If you give a shot and you don't like it, you can get a 100% risk-free money back guarantee. And you can trust me, because I've, I've got a top hat on. Honest Abe, honest Seth. This stuff is the best, you should try it. And thank you for sponsoring this video. But now, I've got some frontiers to wrestle. Do you think that's what they meant? Do you think they used to wrestle the frontier? Surely not. Okay, so run me through what some of the average takedowns, techniques. Yeah. So anything that exists in Greco-Roman, for the most part, exists here. The point okay. scoring is different, so your double legs, your single legs, all of that, okay. still a thing. What's valued in this as far as a takedown, single legs, they love high crotches, they love fireman's carry, they love sweep single. Some okay. of that is because of the influence of Native American martial arts and specifically African diasporic martial arts here, from here, from the Carolinas, called knocking and kicking. Oh, cool. And the ankle pick and single leg is a knocking huge deal. Knocking and kicking? Yeah, knocking and Whoa. kicking is a boxing and wrestling art developed in the Carolinas and the Caribbean uh, by enslaved people. Wow, I had no yeah. idea. That is incredibly cool. We're gonna hop in a stance. Okay. Uh, whatever wrestling stance you're comfy with. Okay. Yeah. And from there we practice some of the many takedowns that either Lincoln or other frontier wrestlers would be using on a regular basis. And if you're thinking, wow, Seth, these look really familiar, it's because we still use them today. All things considered, the 1860s are not really that far back in time, unless you're an American, that's like almost the beginning of our country. But these wrestling traditions and kind of archetypes that you would see from different counties and states, they still linger on today. I was very impressed with the fact that you just lifted me so easily. Like Kentucky's typically a head first state. Pennsylvania is known to be brutal and aggressive. Iowa's style is known to try and physically break opponents through pushing them or driving them. Oklahoma kind of fights from the outside. These are all origins that can kind of somewhat be traced back to their predecessors from the 19th century. Wrestling was the combat sport of the 1800s. Boxing didn't really catch on in the US for, I don't know, 50 years later. But after getting a feel of what the frontier wrestlers' favorite takedowns were, there's one takedown in particular that we want to get to the bottom of and see if we can recreate Abraham Lincoln's famous uh, chokeslam. If we know that that's what Abe Lincoln was known for, yeah. and we can assume that he was well known, if that is stopped, yeah. How do we then find the choke slam as the way out? So that's my theory. Lincoln was known as a shooter. So let's say you're Abe Lincoln, you've got this famous move. Yep. I have defeated it somehow. I have a secret magic sprawl. We'll figure it out. How is the choke slam, the secret thing you've been working on in your backyard, as the answer to the answer? Okay, let me get in character. Yeah, think about pennies and walk into a corner store 12 miles away. Four score and seven years ago. Boom, let's say I sprawl this way. What do you got? Yep, yep. Oh, the trip. Oh my god. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and he was bigger and stronger, right? You yes. slamming me feels a little more accurate to me slamming you. I think the main way he's getting a choke slam, if he's underneath. It's so like maybe he shoots under. Whee! Rather than side control, I think about it from front control. Yeah. So it's here either with a trip. Whoa! Ooh, okay, okay. Ooh, what about this? He gets the same position. Yeah. Oh my god. And goes for like a trip at the same time. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> kind of upset. Yeah. Boom. Yep. Sprawl, sprawl. I'm gonna drop this. I'm gonna pull. And then this oh. becomes my chunk slam. Sprawl, sprawl, sprawl. Yeah, I feel it. And then I can just put the knee in. Yep. What we know now is this. They grab first, they sling the arm over top for the leverage so this guy can be lifted because I can't just lift him with just his hand. They'll lift. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll maybe like, they don't do the same pin as they did if they did the, uh, if they did the tombstone, the pin is. And then, you know. Yeah. They do that one, you know. But I don't know what the pin is from the choke slam. So, uh, who do you lose to? Oh yeah, oh, so yeah. I don't have his name offhand. Uh, we've already talked about this a little bit, but he lost to another member of a volunteer military force during the Black Hawk War. These two volunteer forces were arguing over who got the premier camping spot and Lincoln lost. 
I have no further information than he lost to someone in that circumstance. Oh. Here's my thing, because we know so much about Lincoln's wrestling through his braggadociousness, I love the idea that soldier number five did it, yeah. and he does not acknowledge his name. Yeah, we like, don't have it. <laughs> yeah, that, that can go kind of two ways, where you could, if you lose to somebody, half of you wants to be like, it was the biggest, baddest guy in the whole town. Then the other half's like, well, I don't want anybody to think he's cool. Yeah. It was just like- 301, don't, don't worry about it. Thing. It was just literally, I just wanted my guys to have a good place to sleep. It was a long day, we just walked really far. Yeah. And then, you know, we wrestled him. I was having an off day. <laughs> you know, it could go either way. I say we let Josh figure out exactly why Abraham Lincoln didn't let anybody know who beat him. By giving him that same feeling. I'm gonna beat him. <laughs> if you couldn't gather that from what I was saying. So, if we had beef, or if we wanted to make some money, whichever. Actually, let's decide. Do we have beef, or do we want to make some money, or we tore it? Well, technically speaking, as they're watching this, I am making money. So, we'll just do that. Great, we'll do the other one. You've, you've already fallen for the carnival trick here. We'll do <laughs> so we have beef. We have decided that we must solve our problems on the ground in some variety. Okay. We have gone to the judge, the bartender, the tavern keep, the general store runner, someone in the town with either official or unofficial authority. Maybe I am known well and wide like Abe Lincoln was for my shots and my takedown. Ladies and gentlemen, and now the people are gathering, they're paying attention, they wanna see what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I say I have the widest shot, the greatest reach in these three counties. Step right up, step right up. I say with this enormous power and aptitude of mine that you are too yellow to make a takedown be our point of victory. Sir, are you a coward? Will you make takedowns be our victory? Well, sir. Yeah. Oh man, what's the word? Dang it. Uh, cockalorum? Hold on, dang it. <laughs> Hold on. I, sir, just went to the general store that Miss Patsy over here owns out on 4th Street and um, I can't find my cellular device so I can look up a witty response, but I just bought my finest pants that I own. I don't think my knees will be touching the ground today, sir. So I challenge you to take downs standing. All right, so first lift, we'll say. Sure. Very well. Standing, once the takedown is received, whether it is a lift or a control to the ground, the person who has lifted or controlled shall be the victor. Now, if this were real, we would do best three out of five. Best five out of seven. We might do it with a countdown to see who can get the takedowns in a row. This is YouTube, and if I give you 50 minutes of video, you will leave. Man, this guy gets it. <laughs> so we'll assume a position where we are both ready. We will look at the ref, and we're going to first takedown and lift. Okay. Go! There it is. That's pretty fast. I can't lie to you guys. Um, I, I know I'm not moving very fast here, but I really didn't try to let him take me down. I may be smiling, but I was a little confused in this moment. You're beating me at the thing I wanted to do, so maybe you choose now. All right. I say pin wins. Pin wins? Pin wins. Pin wins, okay. You're so strong. I mean, he's not that strong.
just uh, Me too. that was a battle of uh, just weight, just sheer size over strength. It's a battle. You are like so structurally sound. You feel like you're built out of like um, like steel cables. I appreciate that. I think a lot of it is this work specifically, as yeah. opposed to other kinds of wrestling. Yeah. Because it focuses so much on control. Yeah. Usually I'd be able to like just muscle my way through it and, and kind of like dumb Hulk yeah. out of something. And I was like, okay, here we go. And I'm like slowly going down. I'm like, no, come on. Get, I can, I can, oh shoot. Well, some of it's the hips. I think this style and folk style in general, not just this sort of take on folk and catch. Yeah. You see these kids with these wild hips in high school, yeah. right? Where they're throwing their legs around. And it's just, though I am not in that shape anymore, clearly. It's the mindset of the yeah. style, I think. Yeah. To me, this journey is the epitome of America. Abraham Lincoln, a frontier kid from Kentucky, a rail-splitting, hard-working guy, became stronger in mind and body through a sport that really pushes what you're capable of. Wrestling is hard and it's grueling, and it's one versus one, which kind of pulls out a different side of people. Through his many matches, he gained some of his first followers that would eventually help him win a presidential election. A presidential position in which 99% of people wouldn't want to join. Seven states had already succeeded. He signed up to run a country that was absolutely falling apart with two goals really, to make sure its people are treated equally and to unify the country. And he was mentally tough enough to say he wanted to do it no matter how many people opposed him. Which I think is incredibly inspiring and cool. It just makes me feel all bald eagle screamy. You know what I mean? So that's what won the Civil War. Maybe. <laughs> no, I'm I just mean, kidding. It is for sure. It's interesting to talk about like what won the Civil War or what won the West or whether or not a folk martial art can influence that kind of political. Yeah, of course. But like it is what inspired some of the people that won the Civil War. It's what they thought about going home to. It was their respite and their morale yeah. after some of the bloodiest work this nation has ever done. Right. So, no, but not, no. Yeah, probably what built their toughness and their yeah. mental fortitude is the grinding hard work of wrestling so regularly. And it's interesting so regularly. to think about that, right? The yeah. Civil War and then this style, because there's a, there's, a, there's a crossroads between those two things, right? Okay. Um, and I don't want to sugarcoat this for your audience or you. Or sure. Me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a style that comes from indigenous to this area of martial arts. Okay. Uh, and those people were being colonized and attacked. Yeah. And it comes from African diasporic martial arts. And those martial arts exist because of the slave trade and the Colombian exchange. Do we know which ones? We like, don't. We know whereabouts in Africa. Pre probably predates Dombe. And, yeah. Um, we, we know that once it got here. Yeah. Uh, it started to become things like knocking and kicking yeah. and would later evolve into things like Jailhouse Rock and 52 Blocks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can be inspired and like make historical guesses when we look at things like Haitian machete and Haitian grappling. Okay. Uh, but not a lot of records were kept right. about people's identities. They kept them. Right, but here right, in right. the Carolinas, you could have this conversation with the Gullahs and they'll have a much more detailed answer for you if you like. The Gullahs? Yeah. I'm not even familiar. Oh, hell yeah. Um, this is a very different topic. Okay. Uh, the Gullah Geechee culture was an African diaspora culture here in the Carolinas. It, it exists still. Oh, okay. There's a, there's a town. They're, they've got their own community, their own martial art. Yeah. That sounds like a really fun time. 